This project is the first episode of the House to Home series, where I'll be transforming a newly built one bedroom apartment based out of Western Sydney. Follow along as I take you through the design process, all the way to a final tour of the space. The client reached out having just bought a brand new one bedroom, one bathroom apartment that she'll be moving into in a few months time. I was tasked to do the open plan area, excluding the bedroom and bathroom. The apartment itself has a total internal area of 63 square meters, with a full height northeast facing window that gets plenty of sunlight in the morning. Before I begin, I wanted to briefly thank today's sponsor, Milanote. I have been using Milanote for quite some time to organize and gather my thoughts in a visual way for my projects. From specifying products, all the way to creating a mood board, you'll see how I've used it through this project. Upon starting the project, I asked the client to gather a few images on Pinterest, which I then narrowed down to get a general sense of vibe she's drawn to. The brief is to have a mix of Scandinavian and mid-century elements, with some pop of color and greenery throughout the space. She also highlights the importance of sustainability and minimizing carbon footprint which can be achieved through a careful selection of brand, materials, and second-hand purchases. I took some measurements and did a rough floor plan with a few major pieces to ensure they'll fit into the space. In the beginning, the client wanted a swivel wall-mounted TV on the wall across the kitchen as opposed to a traditional TV setup. After some careful consideration, I proposed a new layout with everything on the living room and a custom dining sideboard bench to open up the space while still being able to invite friends over and have a comfortable dining setting. The client agreed to the new proposed layout, and I began drafting a couple of mood boards. We've ordered the couch at the very beginning due to the longer lead times, and went with the Todd Side Chase sofa from Castlery in a light grey coastal fabric. We ended up with an oak coffee table and lots of curve around the space that gave a feeling of softness and continuity. Once everything is finalized, I began the installation process, starting with the custom dining sideboard bench, which is made out of the IKEA Besta frame and some custom cut wood panels. For the configuration, I went with the 180cm short Besta unit and a 120cm tall Besta unit for the sideboard. I started by building the two Besta units according to the assembly instructions and screw both units together using the provided screws to form a single unit. Then, attach the doors and drawers to the frame before finally assembling the custom cut panels. I opted for the Tazzy oak grain from Formica to better match the dining table and chairs while keeping the cost down and still getting a tactile wood grain texture on the surface. To attach the panels, I used this fast grab liquid nails from Sally's, which has a water-based formulation for easy cleanup. Apply a bead size every 40 cm on large surfaces, and bring the two surfaces together as soon as possible, ideally within the first 5 minutes. To get the seamless and custom look, the panels are cut with overhang to flush with the doors and on the side, along with an additional panel to connect both the top and bottom panel. On the back of the sideboard, I did a quick cut with a hole saw to make an opening for some cables and power board, which allowed the sideboard and bench to be pushed all the way against the wall. Above it, I hung a wall clock, along with a couple of artwork and objects which the client have personally chose to her liking. A good tip before installing a gallery wall is to arrange them on the floor and play around with its positioning. You can also use painters or washi tape on the wall to mark the area and get a better sense on what it will look once hung. Despite owning the place, the client wanted the flexibility to move or change the artwork so we opted to use command hanging strips to hang them. I simply cut the strips vertically into two in order to match the width of the frames. 
As artworks tend to be personal, I like to give clients the flexibility to choose their own, which they can then run by me for advice. Due to logistic issues and furnitures arriving at different times, I ask the client to unbox and install the flat packs in advance, so I can come in and deal with the more intricate details. I switch the positioning of the study and entertainment unit to allow the sofa to be closer to the window and opening up the middle area between the living and dining room. Above the desk, I hung a wall shelving for extra storage and to display some plants or objects. I marked a few dots on the wall with a bracket and a spirit level to make sure that they will come out even. Then, simply screw in the bracket and pop the shelves into the bracket. To prevent it from moving around, I screw the bottom of the shelves into the bracket to secure them. Once the furniture and wall fixtures are set up, I proceed with lighting. As the client wanted a smart light capability, but trying to keep things within budget, I suggested the IKEA Trot Free system instead of the Philips Hue, which I regularly use for my project. Lighting is a very important element in every interior design project as it affects the overall mood of the room and adds another dimension to a space when properly done. I like to mix in different types of lamps and spread them across different areas of the room to serve different purposes. Here, we got this Bolzano-inspired metal lamp for the desk and a brass and marble floor lamp to light up the couch area for reading. Just beside the dining area, I got this table lamp with an opal glass shape to get a soft, diffuse light that creates a cozy atmosphere. To be able to control and change the light temperatures via phone, I got the trot free gateway and connected to the router as per the instructions on IKEA smart home app. Once it is connected, simply pop the cover back on and allow the setup process on the app. It is a pretty straightforward and intuitive process that is easy to follow. I also installed the wireless remote to allow the flexibility to control the lights without a phone. Once they are set up in the app, you can easily change the brightness, temperature, and turn the lights on and off from both the remote and IKEA smart home app. The final step is adding the core to give life to the space. I got an artificial fiddle fig tree to divide the desk from the entertainment area, while adding some greenery and height to the space. As the client didn't have much time or experience in taking care of plants, I got two beginner-friendly plant, a devil's ivy and peperomia, which are fairly hardy and easy to maintain. On the corner of the TV area, I added a neutral pleated vase with some branch arrangements to add some height and visual interest that detracts the eye from the blank white wall. To get some privacy while allowing natural light, we opted for a linen sheer curtain in the living room. There was plenty of fabric and colors to choose from, which we narrowed down to these two fabrics, and ended up with the Alexandra Blanc, and finished just off the floor that gives a neat appearance that is easy to maintain. We also opted for two separate tracks that is joined in the corner, to avoid bunching everything up on one side. For the dining area, I keep things simple with a simple vase arrangement, a beige shearling fabric pillow for some texture, and a small footed bowl to place keys when going in and out of the apartment. With everything completed, it is now time to take a quick tour and some before and after of the space. What was previously an empty apartment has now been transformed into a warm Scandi style home with plenty of storage and space for entertaining. The dining table can easily be expanded to comfortably sit 6 people, and folded to a compact size in order to save space on a day-to-day -day basis. The custom bench and sideboard gives the option of extra seating, and acts as a cozy breakfast nook without taking up valuable space. It also provides plenty of extra storage underneath that can be utilized by the client further down the line. To differentiate the dining area with the living room while still providing continuity, 
I opted for a medium toned oak wood instead of a lighter colored oak that is found in the living area. A combination of neutral white and grey is found throughout the space, with a combination of beige, terracotta, and orange to give a pop of colour and some greeneries that give life to the space. We went with this beautifully textured wool rock in light grey, as it is extremely versatile and fits perfectly with the Scandi style we're going for. Another thing I tried to emphasize is the use of curves throughout the space. From the coffee table, the curved edges of the furniture, all the way to the sofa. It helps soften up the room and is especially great in smaller spaces as it opens things up, making the room feels bigger. Finally, the addition of sheer curtains give it a soft and filtered natural light, while adding texture and a much needed privacy to the space. And that wraps up the makeover and tour of this apartment. Everything shown in this video will be linked in the description below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.